I am from Hawaii. I grew up on the island of Oahu. In Hawaii, believe in the paranormal is extremely commonplace and accepted. Now I live in Florida and I always notice how uncomfortable people are when discussing any unexplained or supernatural phenomena. So I am sharing my experiences here to an audience who might appreciate them and not immediately decide that they are of the devil and ignore them. I left in 2000 and returned home for a brief visit in 2005. I spent the few days I was back with my family, visiting all my favorite places on the island, Waikiki, Bioto and Temple on the windward side, the North Shore, Waimi Falls, Queen of Emma's Summer Palace, and Pali Lookout. Many of these places are not only beautiful, they also have a rich history, as most places do in Hawaii and islands. A brief history lesson, Hawaii was a district country, culture, and kingdom in its own right for hundreds, thousands of years before it was colonized and later made a U.S. territory. Battles, many ancient, have been fought on its islands. Some people, especially the locals, say those events have left their impression on the land and its mana, and that we can still experience evidence of these long ago events. This is not something that just new age people and spiritualists believe, it's commonly accepted. In this story, I don't have enough time or room to go into all stories, beliefs, and customs that exist in Hawaii. Instead, I will focus on the one experience I had in the Pali Lookout that I will always remember. The Pali Lookout is a high point on the windward side of the island of Oahu, where the wind is very strong and has been said to prevent several suicides from taking place because its strength made it impossible to jump from the side of the mountain that overlooks the valley all the way to the ocean. It is also the place that a terrible battle is supposed to have taken place in the 1700s between King Kamehameha and a rival tribe from another island. Warriors fell to their death thousands of feet below on the valley floor when they were pushed off the cliff in battle. So, the Pali Lookout is a sacred place to many Hawaiians. It is also a place where tourists go, high school kids drive to in order to sneak off the trail and smoke pot in secret. Sometimes you might see an abandoned car. It's a kind of a strange place, but also a very beautiful place with tall, coniferous pines, which are rare in Hawaii, and cool mists lingering around the tops of the mountains. Anyway, I was there with my family and I decided to take a short walk down the old, unused portion of the Pai Highway which is more like a hiking trail path type thing, and get away from the group of tourists to spend some alone time in a beautiful place. I walked quite a way away from everyone to where I could no longer hear talking or people noises and just looked over the overgrown side wall and looked down into the top of the trees below and the sheets of green vegetation. It was then that I heard it, soft, Hawaiian ukulele music. No discernible song or particular tune, but it was lovely and melodic. I stood there and listened for quite some time. I was far down the trail and felt like I had maybe gone a little too far, but I wasn't ready to go back. Now, you may not think it's very scary or special or interesting, but there's a belief that when one is in a sacred place or there are spirits nearby, if one is Hawaiian, one will hear the unexplained sound of music. However, I'm not Hawaiian that I know of, but I feel honored to have heard that beautiful sound. There is still no explanation for it that I know of. No people. Too far above the valley to hear anything below. Too far away from cars. This is an extremely secluded and wild location. Almost like being alone in the rainforest. To this day, I have no idea where the music could have come from. I like to think that it was the mana of the land, and that somehow I was able to perceive it at the time, in that place. I hope to go back there again. I used to live in Hawaii for about nine months, and I hear many stories about hauntings that take place there. Everything from night marchers that walk the island to ghosts in the Pali. I had some strange experiences while I was there, and I would like to share one with you. In 2004, there was a girl I really liked. One night, I summed up the courage to ask her on a date. We went to a restaurant, drank some wine, and at about 11 p.m., we decided to go to the beach called Makapu, which is near Honolulu. It was really dark, and there was hardly anyone out. 
We talked about each other's lives and experiences, and we laid down and listened to the ocean for a few hours. At about 2 a.m., strange things started happening. Me and the girl I was with felt our hands being touched by something small. We thought they were miniature crabs, but when we looked, there was nothing there. The moon was full that night, so you can see a lot of stuff, but we saw no crabs. Then the weirdest sound was heard by both of us. It sounded like a baby crying. Keep in mind, it's 2 a.m. and there's no one around. The nearest house is about five miles away. We kept on hearing the crying. We both thought it was a cat crying or something, but when we looked in the direction of the crying, there was no cat to be found. We kept on feeling our hands being touched too. We had both had enough and we decided to leave. I just put it to the back of my mind, thinking that it was crabs and a cat. Two months later, I was sitting with my hairstylist, who was a local, and we began talking about strange things happening on the island. We were talking about night marchers and haunted burial grounds. Then she started talking about Makapu. I asked what's so scary about that place. She said that a long time ago, Hawaiians used to take the deformed babies and kill them at Makapu. She told me some people say if you stay there long enough, you can hear them crying. She told me that she heard them herself one night when she was up there. The hair on my neck and on my entire body stood up. I told her what happened to me there. I knew nothing about this story until the day she told me. And until now, it still gives me the creeps. A few of my cousins told me this story. In the 1980s, when there were children living in the Kanahe apartments, they had a Ouija board that they played with. One day they were hanging out at the home together, and one of their Barbies got up and started walking across the floor. My cousins threw the Ouija board out into the garbage, and soon after they found it back in the closet. Soon after my mother died, my dad was awoken by the sounds of her moaning and crying right behind his head. He was so creeped out, he pulled the covers over his head and refused to look. My grandmother once saw a demon, and he told her that her daughter and her husband would break up. Not only are they still together after quite a few decades, they also have 12 kids. When my father was a child in his Kailua house, he heard and saw a banshee flying outside of his bedroom window. When my cousin was a kid, her grandmother died. Soon after, she saw her grandmother under a table at the end of the hallway in her Kailua house, beckoning my cousin to come to her. My cousin got frightened and refused. My sister and her husband stayed in a rental college in Waimanalo during their honeymoon. At night, they were spooked by a loud, swirling wind around the inside of the bedroom, but all the doors and windows were closed. I'll be back with many stories if I hear or experience more, but I have a lot of family in the islands, and I plan to move back someday. Malaho for reading. Everyone, I look forward to discussing my stories with you in the comments. I'm in the military, stationed on NCTAMS PAC, communications base in Wahai, Hawaii. I work for base police, and one morning at about 5.40, the base was completely quiet and pitch black. I decided to park over by an old hobby shop facing the base fire department. I was parked, just hanging out listening to the radio when I saw an image of an older Asian man walking around the grass area by the hobby shop. I didn't think anything was unusual, maybe the employees arrived early that day. Then about five minutes later, I saw the old man again. And I was going to make contact with him, but when I took out my flashlight to walk towards him, he was gone. I was a little shook up when I got back into my vehicle. Then my police unit suddenly shut off, but the key didn't turn back. I had no idea what to think. I was stunned. Then my unit started to rock back and forth like someone was jumping on the bumper. I got out and had my pistol ready, but there was no one out there. Just then, my car turned back on by itself. I was scared to death and rushed back to the police station with my emergency lights on. When I got there, I explained to my supervisor what had just happened, and now I don't leave the station until after the sun comes up. I've been a military police officer for six years and have seen and dealt with a lot of bad situations, but nothing ever scared me like this. This happened on the island of Kauai. I don't know why I went to investigate, but I kept feeling drawn to this location. 
The old caretaker? I'm not sure what the building is. Cottage is a dilapidated building sitting in the middle of nowhere. There used to be electrical wires connecting to a wood pole, but there's no power to the building any longer. The first time I drove by, I wasn't aware it was there. In fact, I had driven past it for years. It was isolated off a small turn about, and there was never a reason to drive up that way. I feel silly admitting it. I never knew it was there, but I wasn't called. When I use the word called, I mean I was summoned. By who or what? I don't know. This is not something I go out of my way to do. If I had a choice, I would never check out an empty building. This was different. It had a lonely quality connected to it. I stared at it for a while before I wandered over to get a closer look. I made sure I looked at it over in the daylight. It looked like it was about to collapse on itself. It was a pathetic little house. It had one living area, no bedroom, and a tiny little outhouse on one side. There appeared to be a small kitchen or laundry area on the other side of the building. A wood pole jutted straight up into the air. It looked oddly out of place. The area was a junkyard of old cars, thrown out rubbish, and abandoned furniture. I felt so sad looking around. How can anyone have lived here? I am certain it must have been a lonely existence. There aren't any homes around, and the nearest property? A cemetery across the road on the other side of the street. I think I understand now. Maybe this little house was the caretaker's home overseeing the cemetery. I wondered what his story was. Somehow, I knew it was a male entity pulling me here. I don't know how I... I don't know how. I just knew. I carry my camera wherever I go, and I decided to take a photo. It is posted on my photos page of my website. It was a unique building, and I wanted to look at it later. You know, study it, try to figure it out. It would take me a couple more weeks before I returned. The final visit, and when I say final for good reason, came on an evening around 9pm. This is what I saw at the night. Driving around, the air felt charged with energy. It was a beautiful evening, and the air was still. The trade winds had stalled, and I could hear every bug, every toad, every cricket. It was magical. To my left, the ocean pounded against rocks and cliffs. I can smell the salty seawater, and it invigorated my senses. My skin was tingling with anticipation, and I don't know where I was headed. I just drove along, waiting for the signal to stop. I found myself near the cemetery, and then I turned onto the dirt road, leading to the place I called the caretaker's cottage. It was disorienting. There were no lights along the street. It was completely black in there, and you feel like you're driving through a cave. My headlights penetrated the darkness to a degree, but I couldn't see beyond the light. It felt as though the light was being gobbled up by hungry blackness. It was unnerving to say the least. It was so quiet. I can hear the gravel and the dirt beneath my tires. I felt like I was making so much noise. Pulling to a stop along the caretaker's cottage, I didn't dare step out of the truck. Instead, I grabbed my camera and started snapping away. My heart was beating rapidly, but I wasn't scared. There was this feeling. I would finally get some answers in this oily darkness. I was right. By picture number four, I started hearing footsteps coming from inside of the building. Only I didn't see anything. I could feel him there, and I took another picture. A kind of hostile yell came from the right of the building. It was a man's voice, but I couldn't tell what he was saying. One thing I couldn't miss was that his anger was emanating from the voice. He was beyond angry. It was then I heard him step outside and start to walk towards my truck. I backed away as quickly as I could, driving away in my truck. All I could think about was those photos. Would I get to see him in any of the photos? I drove straight home and pulled the disc from my camera. Plugging it into my computer, I waited to see if the images popped up on the screen. To my surprise, I found myself looking into the face of a very angry man. It was the last photo taken. This photo was posted at the bottom of my photo page on the website if you're interested. The ghostly caretaker has his mouth open as if he's saying something, which he was. 
One hand bullied into a fist, and you can clearly see his fingers. The other hand is being held up to his upper chest. The rest of his body didn't manifest. His face and hands are sickly white. I remember trying to take the last photo, but the batteries were already dead. Ghosts will do that to electrical items. They drain us, our equipment, to pull energy and use it to appear. The next day, I asked the local police about the caretaker cottage, and they didn't know who had lived there or why the building was there. Many of the local police who had grown up in the area always remembered it being there, in the same horrible, sad condition. No one remembered the caretaker living there. Growing even more frustrated, I wondered why I was led there. It was obvious this ghost man didn't want any help from anybody. I think he just wanted to remind somebody, anybody, that he existed. Ghouls, how was the Hawaii stories? They creeped me out. Like, they were short, but they were creepy. And it makes so much sense that Hawaii has so much spiritual activity because it is surrounded by a giant, natural, moving body of water, which is very, very, very widely believed to be a uh, an energy source for spirits. And I also believe that. Another side note, we're almost at 2,000 ghouls. We are almost 2,000 ghouls strong. Like, how? <laughs> I thank you so much. Like, it is amazing. It's mind-blowing to me. But when I hit 2,000, I will be posting a blooper reel type of thing. So, yeah, look out for that. Probably Monday. Monday? No, no, no. Probably Saturday I will post that. Since Saturday, I kind of want it to be fun videos. So, yeah, look out for that. And as always, my last video will be on the top left. My next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen as well as in the description box below. The secret word for the day will be candy cigarettes because that is what I am unhealthily consuming while I edit. <laughs> but remember, there's always someone. Or something watching you.